Hello. All right, so we can finally get to some deck building today. I have something else that we got to do first, but and it might take a little while just because, you know, this set, but uh, there's definitely some commanders people want us to get to. I think that there are, like, four people that are building the Teamer Dragon at our shop, and there are four people that are building Raga Draga, the untappy dude. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, but th that's like a... It's like a downgraded Paradox Engine, I guess. Uh, but, all right. So the first thing that we're going to do that I have over here, because it's one of my favorite things that we do. Oh, let's make the tier list. Yeah. We're going to do this one for Boulder's Gate. There is 67 legendaries. All right. So we got, we got we to gotta make this one uh, quick, though, then. We can't sit here and talk about every single one of them. Yes, yeah, so most of them are uh, not that good to begin with. So it should a lot be of them are probably like the the ba like the background ones. Yes. So uh, let's get right to it. So what's the first guy is? It's Abdel the... Adrian, the 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 ward. So let's see. When he enters the battlefield, exile a number of other non-land permanents you control. And he leaves the battlefield. You create one white soldier creature for each token uh, for each permanent exile. <laughs> Exile this way. So you get the exile the board, your board, make a bunch of one ones, and when he re-enters, you get all your stuff back. Um It seems could, fine. It seems it could be a cool mono white blink deck. Mono white ETB has slowly gotten better and better and better. So like He uh, is choose a background, so remember he And you get a color option with him too and yeah. make him better. So I you know what? Um B. I'd say B, yeah. He's yeah, just mid tier. Okay, so Alright. Snake Boy, right? Mm -hmm. No. What is that? It's hard to see. It's the. Um, is that to do that draw and put a time uh, the time counter dude? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let me see if I can find him. Sorry, like I said, I'm scrolling through all the legendaries too, and there's a lot of them. Yeah, there's so uh, many. Yeah, he's the tap draw card, then exile something with a. Uh, also, a I had to switch. It. I had to switch websites because the other one required a twitter account and i deleted mine so uh, uh i i had to use this one and it doesn't let you swap the portrait so like a lot of the stuff gets cut off on this one but that's this, fine yeah so it's a lot <clears throat> alondo the seer draw a card then exile a card from your hand with a number of time counters on it equal to its mana value and it gains when the last time counter is removed from this card if it's exiled you may cast without paying its mana cost if you cast a creature spell is this creature this way spell this way, it gains haste until the end of the turn. Then yes. remove a time counter from each other card you own in, in exile. So what's kind of cool about this, though, is that you could actually go down the chain. So, like, say you did, like, an, uh, a five drop, a four drop, a three drop, a two drop, and, like, or whatever, and then you hit, like, a one drop, and one... You could basically cycle all of them down, because if I'm reading, reading this right, it says, then remove a time counter from each other card you own in exile. So every time you cast something, you're also reducing it. So I think there could be some cool nifty things with, like, kind of chain reacting if you have a, a good hand. Or just to, like, cheat some stuff in. With, what are with the like... colors, too? It's Simic? Yeah, it's Simic. So, yeah, I mean... I think it's a sol another solid B. He's, yeah, he yeah. has some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could probably untap him to get his effect, but, like, it just puts more things in suspend, mm -hmm. basically. And you kind of need more red to deal with suspend, like, stuff anyway yeah so we got a blue halfling rogue um oh, oh, lost my page that's the the blue halfling rogue um god there's so many in here nope there's like four blue yeah there he is. yeah there's a lot when, when this uh, when you attack uh whenever you attack up to one target attack creature can't be blocked this turn return that creature to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step choose a background so you can make something blockable, and but you have to put it back into your hand. Um, unless you're playing some weird fringy kind of ETB stuff that you want it to happen, a lot of times you want to give the unblockable to like an attack-based strategy and like a rogue-style deck. And usually you don't want those going back into your hand. You kind of want them to commit to the board. So I'd say this is kind of C for me. I just choose yeah. a background. No, no, I, I I agree. I don't like the bouncing. I don't think I don't think one creature getting unblockable a turn would have been that bad. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now we got a, a dwarf cleric is red. Uh, it's haste uh, three three for four. When it whenever he attacks, you may discard your hand. Uh, if you do, draw a card for each player being attacked. Choose a background. 
so this wants to be in like a deck that doesn't have much value and just kind of want to pukes your hand out but like how good are those decks really not that great i think that's like a c it, it's definitely doable just not very good uh so we now... got that is no oh, sorry let me find uh, oh this is the death touch life thing of your end step choose one uh, fee target opponent loses life equal amount of life, life they lost this turn, or friends you gain life equal the amount of life you gain this turn. So it's a a wound reflection on your turn, mm -hmm. or uh, double your life. I guess you're in the colors for wanting to do both those kind of things. So I think you can you can do some nifty things with it, and it's probably just a very fair. It's got death touch and life link too. Mm -hmm. So like probably would still be riding in the B. I would think B too, because those kind of strategies, they're pretty good. They have a ton of life loss and life gain gets printed yeah. like every set. So yeah, it, there's a lot of support for it, and yeah. he's kind of like a nice payoff for it because mm -hmm. like you're either gaining double that life, which triggers all your stuff again, yep. or your rune reflection, and you can also pair that with rune wound reflection anyway. Yeah. Or and next you, one is uh, Baba Lasagna, the Night Witch. Yeah, Baba. Lasagna. She's one sacrifice up to three permanents. If there were three or more card types among the sacrifice permanents. Each point loses three life, you gain three life, and draw three cards. Mm -hmm. So you're in Golgari, getting all three per three different permanent types, unless you're running a bunch of creatures that have all those types. I, it's doable, but it's probably a little bit harder, and you're probably not going to get as much as you like. Um, you can also sack a land, I guess. So you could be like land, and then like creature enchantment or artifact enchantment, so you're only sacking two to draw three. But then like, I don't know. Maybe if you have a something that like a, a an artifact that can make that makes everything also an artifact too, it just seems a lot of setup just to draw three cards and gain three life, and they yeah, lose three life. Too. There's definitely colorless ways to make things an artifact, you know, like there's so, like yeah. mana rocks and like, but again, like you're still sacrificing things. Like I, I think that this is this is a lot of work, and then like you're playing all these weird like cards that might not synergize well with what you're doing because you're trying to make the commander work so much. So the question is, like, do you try and draw as many cards as you can and make the commander work, or are oh, you yeah. just playing a Golgari deck? You can win. Um, I, yeah, because I, I think, I'm thinking, like, what's that thing? It's like the, the there's that one priest that you, like, have to sacrifice two creatures and you get, or mm -hmm. there, there's a creature that kind of does that, like, you sacrifice two creatures to get, like, a reanimation. Or not reanimation, it's like card draw and they lose life and you make black mana. Oh, yes. Yeah. I know what you're talking about, yeah. And then everybody, get... each opponent has to like sack two creatures or something. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking one. about. I know what but you're talking about, yeah. It doesn't get a ton of play though because it's still a hefty cost just for that. Yeah, I think that this is just a lot of work. I think it, like the concept is there, but it's just it's just a lot of work. If And if you get to work, I mean, you go, you, you dig pretty aggressively. And... Yeah. But drawing cards is cool and all, but like, there that's not a color that I think performs really well with a lot of cards in your hand as much as board presence. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. Or like something to do with your reanimation. So this is. I think it's from the commander deck. Um. Blah, 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 blah. Is that, uh, he's the vampire dude, right? Mm hmm. I think. Sorry, it's so many in here. Why is there so many? There's 67. I told you that. It's Commander Legends. Oh, there he is. He's remember? the very last one. How many did Creepy. we have last time for Commander a lot. Legends? It was a lot, right? Yeah. Yo, Continue. Creatures your, <clears throat> it's creatures your opponent's control with power less than his power are goaded. Whenever goaded attack... Uh, Whenever a go to attacking or a blocking creature dies, you create a treasure token. Choose a background. Okay. That's not... Go ahead. Yeah, what were you going to say? I like pairing this with the green one, that the Raised by Giants, because it makes them, like, what, a 10-10? Mm -hmm. Now everything is basically, everything your opponent's controls will constantly have to attack. Yeah. No, I, I don't think that that's that bad. Like, I, I don't think it's that good either, because we all know that coding is only good until it's you and them. And then and they have to attack you, and sometimes you don't like that. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it's it's just, I think it's fine, but, like, all of that to just, like, make a, like a token. But 
they did print a ton of new goading stuff. And it's not that you can't goad enough. Like, you're going to be able to goad plenty. Because we've just gotten tons, yeah. like, of goad stuff in the past couple, like, in the, in, in the last year or so. Like, they've been printing a lot of goading stuff, so. Uh, it, does, it does say that whenever uh, whenever goaded attacking or blocking creature uh, dies, you create a treasure token. Yeah. So, even so, the funny thing about that is, even if a crowd opponent just, even if you're, there's nothing goaded, and someone goes attack and blocks, and then and it dies, you get a treasure token. But it's only in attacking combat, so like, I don't know. Yeah, I I don't know. I I like I don't even know if I want to call it a B commander because like, I think what it's doing is too fair. Like I. Like I get, I I've just never been a huge fan of goading commanders. Like I I, I nope. think it's just too fair. Like everybody in their ass has tried to make their uh that like Nile one like the cat, but like it, it's just it just doesn't work. Like goading is only as good. It's the same thing with Pramicon. You know the stupid wall thing that like you know people can yeah. only attack, but like once there's only two people left, like it doesn't even do anything. So like. And we have so many ways to get around combat nowadays or just win. Like, mm. it's, I just not a fan. Like, with all the one sided board wipes, good interaction that we get every set, like, I just, I'm not a fan. Um, I don't know. Stick, I stick them in, in C. Yeah, I would say a C. There, there's enough support to make it doable. Yeah, but like... it is not a trash tier commander. I think people will try to play this as well. But it's just one of those things that it's a more for fun thing, and it's not actually powerful. So here's one of the gods. So Bane, this is Bane, Lord of Darkness, Esper, uh, the the new thing with the, all of them. If your life total is equal to ha equal to half or less, yeah, we don't have to say that again. Yeah. So whenever another a non token creature you control dies, target opponent may have you draw a card. If they don't, you may put a creature uh, card with equal or lesser toughness from your hand onto the battlefield hand onto the bottom so why that's really interesting is there's the some colors really again sorry it's esper okay like there's some really powerful creatures that have really low power and toughness so you could really easy like all right i'm, I'm this like two two like is gonna die trigger am i drawing a card or am i gonna put something in the play and you're like let's put something in the play you're in the best and colors for this too mm-hmm because you also get, like, Aegis Insight, and you could be playing, like, an Aristocrat-style deck that, like, wants things to die. So, like, you're either getting value from that, like, oh, it's like, oh, I'm sacking my Kuku Show, or, like, I'm oh. putting this Karmic God into play for free. Yeah, so, Tom, like, you play Taysa Karla, for example. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, that sounds good, yeah. Yep. Or, Tom, like, another cool example is, like, uh, I play Karmic Guide, I reanimate something. Karmic Die dies, triggers, response... I could put in like a mole drifter because it's only two mana, uh, two toughness, mm -hmm. or like a solemn simulacrum because it's only two toughness. I guess the only or, thing holding it back is uh, that you could just let them draw a card a lot of the time. Yeah, but then draw you're constantly drawing. But like agent of treachery only has three toughness. Yeah. So you could like let something like something die, and it's just like okay, here I am. So. It's hard for me to put this in A because it's not like uh this no. isn't like Aethrios where it's like you're losing life so eventually you have to give it to them. A lot of the time they're just going to let you draw and at the normal level of commander a draw is usually okay. So like I it's, I feel like it might be like the top of B or pushing like an A minus or something. Yeah, I think it's doable. It it's another one of those commanders that requires <laughs> A lot of setup and a good hand, but the thing is, he is always drawing you cards to help get that. Yeah, it's through, not bad. It's it's not that the effect is bad. I think it's just a nifty aristocrats build that, like, once every time something dies, you could either draw or cheat something in. So you just imagine. It oh, as, you know like, what? Even just as the concept of you're drawing every time. Yeah. yeah. No, that's an A tier. That's definitely A tier. Yeah, I guess that... the one thing comes into if someone says, "Okay, you could put something it's in your not hand once in the play." Per turn? No. Uh, no. It's just when, uh, whenever another creature you control dies. Now, you do get into this weird spot where, like, say a creature dies and someone says, I don't want you to draw a card, put something in the play. And then you put nothing in the play for that creature. 
But I guess it depends what the, what creature's toughnesses are. So, like, maybe your one drop didn't cheat anything in, but maybe your thing with four toughness can. So, like, it, dep- like, it plays a lot of unknown and mystery. And it's kind of really cool because it's Bane, Lord of Darkness. So, like, your opponents are in the dark, and they don't know what you're going to do and what you're going to put in or what. So, that's it's nifty. I think, yeah. I think there's definitely something doable. And at worst, you're playing an Orzhov Aristocrat deck, and you get to splash blue in it. Yeah, uh, how, how I, I, think, I, think it has, I think it has potential, for sure. Uh, so this is Ball, Lord of Murder. This is whenever another the other god, whenever another non-token creature you control dies, put a plus one counter on target creature, and then goad it. I'm not. I'm not a f- I think this. I falls. feel like. I feel like this falls around here. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, the only thing it's I think you want wanted... is shunned, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you know what this does do though? Um, it's a uh, a persist combo card. Why? Oh, because one one counter. Because you you dump one, you kill something, dump the put the counter on the thing with persist, and then it loses its uh plus the minus one counter. So if then it dies, and then you could do a uh, counter on something else and. Okay, so then that's that is that is better. So yeah, it's basically the same thing. It's probably like a self sacking aristocrat deck, with like, the plus one counter working with persist instead of, uh, undying with like uh, uh with Yogmoth. And there is a lot of persist things in those colors, right? Mm-hmm. And your Murderous Red Cap is in, in this set, in that color combo. It can All put right, a 1-1 so one, the... one counter on anything? Yeah, any creature. Okay. And Or if your opponents really want them to attack with something. Okay, so... So I think that's the... The next one is that Mythic dude. I, I know his effect. He's the... He's all party types. It's funny the more you look at his armor and everything he has, you could see the little aspects of all of all of the creature types he represents. Where is he? Uh, Bracos party leader. So four mana two four. He is uh he is also he's always an orc, but he's also a cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard. The ultimate multi class. When he attacks, defending player loses X life, and you create X treasure tokens where X is the number of creatures in your party. You choose a background. So when you attack, you automatically make four oh no no sorry he's one creature in the party he just covers the whole party that's what he does okay i think it's a c yeah i i it, like the whole party shenanigans like there are good cards he's, he's also mono black and yeah. so with the background you only get one other color yeah so you're gonna struggle with that like so it, he's he's not the worst card in the world. Like not the worst commander we've ever read. Okay, what's this one? Uh, let me find him. Uh, Caller of the Small. Oh, this is a three mana three three trample. Whenever uh, the small deals combat damage to a player for each token you control, create a one one white rabbit creature token. Oh no, that's actually pretty good. Yeah. So you just want to. Uh, I already see there's a bunch of people brewing her already. Uh, you just want all like the t- token generations shenanigans, and then you could. Like, imagine her with, like, a Scoot Swarm or something. Or we have that new card, the the Brack Zoologist, that draws you a card when you make a token this turn. Yeah, I think and, I think she... The, the only problem is she has to hit, is the only downside. So you have to play the weird unblockable things or, you know, like, get her bigger or anything like that. But it's definitely doable. So I, but, I she's th- also, but she's also three mana, so, like, she's know, already yeah, kind good. of, like, yeah. early in the early game. Yeah, it's, I think it's pretty good. I don't, I don't think it's A, but it's it's definitely a strong B. All right, this is the horror commander deck, dude. So he has uh, horrors have uh, Menace. He's a three six for five. Uh, whenever a heart you control deals damage to a player, that player mills that many cards. At the beginning of your end step, choose target artifact or creature card in an opponent's graveyard that was put there from the library this turn. Put on the battlefield under your control. I think he's actually pretty good. I don't know because if it's A, but I think it's another B commander. Remember, you don't have to mill with him to get the effect. You no, can just I know. Play yeah, but you're you still, it's still mill, so, you, like, and he has to be there, like, I, 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 don't, I don't know, I think, he, I think he's good, I think he's got potential. Yeah, also then, also the horror synergy is pretty, pretty nifty, too. Yeah, and, like, there aren't, like, an array of horrors that are good, like, there are some good ones, like, don't get me wrong, like, there are some scary ones, like, Hullbreaker, well, we're, we're getting, we're getting a lot in Chupacabra is pretty good, like, yeah, I know. Yeah, sludge like we just got sludge mar- uh, monster is pretty awesome. I know, but have you read some of these dragons? Yeah, his- yeah, I know. I'm just saying, I, I, I think he's pro, I think he's probably landing in B for me. 
because again, like Mill has that stigma and like, it's not that the, I, I, I think it's good. I think that this commander is going to be good, but then it's also based on like how good are your opponent's decks with like the creatures you're going to be reanimating. So. True. Oh, I forgot this, uh, consuming appar yeah, consuming aberration is a hard too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Ravenous Chupacabra, Hallbreaker Horror. Because because they mill for like how much damage they do, which yeah yeah, which is different. which is cool. It's I I I think it's good. It, he's def. How much mana is he? Five mana. Yeah, which is fine. That's so he get a decent amount of things up before he hits. Yeah, I just think that reanimation like that, like milling reanimation like that, that you know it. It's kind of like, I mean, we run, we run, like to run the primordials that do the exact same thing in a lot of our decks, and they only they're on ETB, and this is at the end of every turn. But it, it is true; it has to be this what was milled this turn. Mm -hmm. So if you like hit something really good, yeah, the primordials like, you could just wait off until it happens, and the opponent can also protect it by just like killing the commander or something like. If something bad's gonna happen, they're gonna interact with it. And also, people are starting to run a fuck ton of graveyard hate. And more and more, I see people playing cards like, especially Lion Sash. That card's getting a lot of play at our shop right now. Lion Sash. Yeah, it's uh, pretty good. Like graveyards are like a second hand, and so you kind of have to interact with them a little bit. No, I totally agree. Okay. Um, so next one is Commander Liara Porter. So five mana for five three. Whenever uh, you attack. Spells you cast from exile this turn cost X less to cast, where X is the number of players being attacked. Exile top X cards of your library, and at the end of the turn, you may cast spells from among those card those exiled cards. What is her colors? Uh, she's uh, uh, Boros. This is not the colors for this. No, it's definitely like a red thing. I guess the white is the attacking. You could dig really deep, but then you also run into that issue like. If you swing too hard, you exile too much. Um, where are you? Yeah, you, know, you could just hit a lot of things and you end up not being able to play like everything that you want. Whenever you attack spells, you can't remember. It's also another one of those effects that like it doesn't remember what was exiled previously. It's only was exiled this turn type things. It's a whole trigger. So if you hit something that you really want to play next turn, you you can't. You have to. It has to be whatever she hits. So I, I don't know. I I think it's. I don't like. I think it would have been better with like blue or something else, like an is it or or if it just let you cast any card that's been exiled th this way. So like maybe you exile something like five turns ago, and then it makes it does make them cost X less, but you still have to pay like the colors. Yeah. Is this the myriad guy? Um, at beginning, uh, yeah, beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature you control gains haste and myriad until the end of the turn. Yeah, that's pretty myriad's good. pretty cool. Myriad as a, pretty cool. as a commander, though, I don't know, but as I, th there's definitely some shit you could do with this because Boros I mean, is it Boros? And Boros, is, yeah, Boros is probably like the attacking color. Like they're they're the decks that care about attacking. Uh, I don't know. Like, green, green is in there too. It's definitely well, Naya is the. Well, green's got big, like gr big creatures that you care about, but I think Boros has more like when you attack with something, this happens. I don't know, Elder Gargaroth. There's definitely some things, but remember, Myriad doesn't work with attack triggers. So. Oh yeah, true. Right. It's it's just for copying. It's well, better with for... ETBs. I guess yeah, ETBs are like combat triggers. Mm -hmm. So it's better which, with like gold span dragon, sun got titan. A lot of those. Yeah, sun titan. No, uh, gold span's on, on attack. No, but, it's no, it's when it enter. Isn't it when it ends? No, it's when it attacks. Oh yeah, okay. Well, whatever. Uh, but like terror, the peak seems kind of cool. Drop like three, like yeah, get two more of those. I'm, ju I'm just saying, if it was Naya, I think it would, I would, it it would be a little better. But I, I think it's still definitely got potential. I think it's a B tier easily. Yeah. It's just the colors that are holding it back. Like, and well, that is it. I don't it. think white holds back anymore. White's got so I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But it's not, not stuff, there. not stuff that pairs with Myriad, though. It's just good cards. I'm not saying that the colors are bad, like, bad anymore. It's just for what Myriad wants to be doing. I think if you had green, it would change a bit. 
But I think a lot of the good stuff that's in white has been like ETB stuff or like and enchantments, but like creature based. I mean, there I is just... there is Gisela in these colors. That's a pretty good card. Mm -hmm. uh, no, there's definitely some stuff for sure. It's definitely. I think it's a strong B. I I don't think it's an A. Yeah. A though. No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I agree. I'm just I'm just saying like it it's it's still limited. It's just one of those things. Uh. Um, that's the guy of the uh the the bar dude of um Yawning Portal. Okay, there he is. So whenever uh, he has to choose a background, um, whenever uh he attacks, look at the top four cards of your library. You may exile a creature card from among them. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in random order for as long as that card remains exiled. You may cast it. The spell has uh undaunted. It costs one less to cast for each of your that, uh, for each opponent. This is actually pretty good. That is actually kind of cool. He, so you and get to choose, choose another color. So you can go Simic. You can go, you can go uh, literally uh, any color would really work with this, honestly. Yeah. Like, and then you just find the creature that you want, and then it usually is going to cost three less. Three because... less, yeah. It, that's mm. no. I I think that that it's value. It's cheating. It's reduction of mana cost. I think it's pretty good. I think it's a B. I think it's. it's a, I think it's fair. a B. Yeah, it's fair. It's it, it's hard to push up to like. I, I mean, it's even an argument that this isn't even an A, you know? I said that this yeah, is like a strong A-. minus. Maybe we you know? should just look at, like, comparatively for cards in the set compared to, like, all Commander. But No, there's know. no, there's definitely some A and S tier Commanders in here, Derek. We just have not gotten to them. Like, Mr. Um, so, Dragon Boy, Mr. Make Things Into Enchantments, hmm. Mr. Trust me. There's, there's stuff in here. We just haven't gotten to it. But anyway, yeah, so the Invoker Adept, he's, that's the four mana for 4-4 four, four with Haste. You may activate abilities of other creatures you control as though they had haste. Mm -hmm. And then you get tap whenever whenever you activate an ability this turn by spending four more mana to activate it, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. This sounds good. What color so are, what color is it, Naya? It's Jeskai. Jeskai. Okay. So you don't get Thrasios. Mm -hmm. Uh I'm just trying to think of like what how you would play this. I guess, like, Walking Ballista activates for four, so that's kind of cute. But it's also cool. So things that have immediate tap abilities that you kind of want to use right away. So, like, uh, like a really cool thing you do with her is, like, Fate Stitcher. ETBs tap to untap her immediately, then tap to activate her again. And then, like, play something like... Uh, but I, if you were trying to storm off with creatures, this is not... Like, you want... Well, green. not not storm. You're just, like, copying effects. And you, like, play a time stream Navigator, which costs four mana, and you activate it, and now you have three activations of it. So you get uh, three extra turns after this one. If you have a City's Blessing. Um, it's not bad. Halo Fountain also has activated abilities that cost higher... The, but it's just, it's just if you win the game, never mind. Yeah, um, yeah, the higher one you win the game, yeah. Uh, but like, uh, oh yeah, for uh, our 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 Canis the Omnipotent is a haste effect that you can tap right away. It lets Mother Runes, it gives Mother Runes haste. Which yeah, is kind of the thing. Yeah, I just think like it, this commander wanted to be in green, right? But I guess it's more fun to try and do it outside of that because it's like, I, it's just because a lot of the things I'm I'm just trying to think of like. What are the activated abilities that you're playing in this? I guess Lithoform Engine. You can like double copy casting something. I guess like you could kind of run anything, or you could just run it. I guess you have to see because you're in a lot of like that's a really big color option. Like for activated, like whether even maybe if you want to go like artifact creature shenanigans. There's a lot of blue creatures that probably have like activated abilities that no one. Really I know. I have to think. I, okay. I have to think about it. That's the thing. Like. It's not like coming to my mind immediately, and I'm sure that there's something there. But as it stands right now, I'd probably want to put it in B. Just because. Oh no, I wouldn't think she'd be higher than B because yeah. like she makes a copy of one ability that costs a bunch. Unfortunately, like the thing is, some of the best abilities that we really like in the game are low co are pretty low costing. Yeah. I mean, there's like mirrors, and there's definitely stuff you can play with her. All right, so what is the this one? So that's. Chef lady. Let me find her. Um, She's a human peasant. How dare you? <laughs> so, tap, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of tokens you created this turn. 
put one of those cards in your hand, the rest of your bottom of your library in a random order. Choose a background. What do you think about this? Um, Hatchet seems just... So it is kind of like a weird draw engine, but you have to make tokens for it. So it commits you into getting making tokens. And usually you're going to want to dig to find more token generators to keep looking for stuff. Yeah. And a lot of the time it's better for your commander to, like, be the token generator. To, like, have the consistency. But in this regard, like, she does look at a lot of cards, depending on how many you've made. And I guess you could pick green as the other background, and... That makes it a lot better. Yeah. I I don't I guess it's I guess it's a B. Like I mean it, it gets cards, like And I for don't... white, any card you could re if you could dig in any way, shape, or form, let's let's go. Yeah, like it's yeah. So alright, <laughs> here's the scry guy. Elmister, scry guy, yeah. Let you scry the next instant sorcery spell. You cast this turn, cost X less the cast where X is the number of cards you looked at this way while scrying. Then his plus two is draw a card and scry two. So he already makes your next instant sorcery cost two less just by plusing him, which is pretty good. Because it's funny if you think about it, it's doing almost what um, Will Kennerith does the draw two cards and makes your a bunch of spells cost two less on a plus ability. And then exile up the, his minus three is exile the top card of your library, create a number of 1 1 blue fairy creature tokens with flying where equal the card's mana value. And he, I don't like exiling cards unless you really don't want to play them. Mm -hmm. But just being like a spell slinger deck, because there's some really good like scry cards already out there. Yes. And being able to like, call, make make big spells cost way less with just like a simple like like mystical spe make mystical specula speculation scry three. Then you plus them. You scryed five in one turn with one mana. Your next insert sorcery costs five mana less. Yeah. No, he's he's definitely got some shit. Oh, oh, Tom, 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 Tom. I just realized you plus Elmister, right? Uh, mystical speculation buy back two because it costs two less because you scryed two already. Uh, mystic speculation will only ever cost one mana with the buyback, so you could just buy it back for one blue. You cast it like two times. That's scry six cards buy back with only spending two mana plus the other two. So that's up to seven mana for two blue on scry cost already. Mm. This might be a deck where like serum visions and like preordain and stuff like that becomes like really good. Yeah, I feel like there's something here. And you're playing spell slingers and spells, so like you're digging and you're finding other yeah, good just, spells. Just missing the red, right? Uh don't have to be the red. Yeah, I know. It's just the red cards are so cracked. Like, you miss the Storm Kiln Artist to, like, regenerate the value on, like, trying to loop that card. But, like, I I just think it's... It seems, it seems good to me. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. we have some stupid big spells that you could be casting. So, like, it's definitely doable. It's you, just, know what this, you know what this guy probably is? It's probably an extra turns commander. You're just going to dig into your extra turn spells and pay them for, like, two mana. Yeah. Or you're just going to dig its approach to the second sun and just throw it off for like zero. Hmm. Oh, I think I might put him in A. Spell yeah, thing no. looks so good right now yeah. and he really supports it. No, I, I, I completely agree. Okay. And the fact that he could just draw you a card every turn, like your dig, your, your, um, your serum vision is playing serum visions every turn by his plus. That just seems real good. No, it's definitely very good. Okay, so the green, this green chick. That is, let me find her. Uh, Erinus the Gloomstalker. Uh, Death Touch, whenever she uh, attacks, return target land from your graveyard to the battlefield. Choose a background. Eh? Uh, eh. Eh. Only does something if lands are in the graveyard. Maybe you need like a, a good background that helps you mill, but like I know she has death touch, so like people don't want to block her, but like it is attack trigger, not damage trigger. Oh, 
doesn't seem great. She's only a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, and even if you go in Simic, which is, like, the best colors for this, like, uh, it's still just, like, getting a land back, and we have so many ways to do that already. I think it's C. I'd rather play, like, the Slime Overlord thing, whatever his name is. Oh, the, the All Slime, or I forgot what his name is, over, over her. Yeah. She's not bad, though. Like, I, it, returning, you know, it, she could definitely do some stuff, but there's just better commanders. All right. So this is um, Faldron Dreadwinter Herald. Whenever you cast a spell from exile or land enters the battlefield under your control from exile, create a 2-2 Green Wolf creature token. One man tap, discard a card, exile the top card of your library. You may play it this turn. Yeah, this is definitely fair prosper, but definitely still doable. Definitely yeah, not bad. Because I remember we are talking about, because she is in red, so you get all those really cool exiling off the top effects. Mm -hmm. and, but the only payoff is you just make 2-2 two, two Green Wolf. Yeah, which is nowhere near as good as making treasure like it is in Prosper. But then I'm also thinking, you go that wide with wolves, you could also just slam down a Torvald if you ever find it and be like, I'm going to draw a bazillion cards now. But yeah, yeah it's more fair. No, no, it's still a B for sure. Because the concept of your deck is card is card value. It's just mm -hmm. card. Even though it's harder to pull off, you're in green. Like, you're going to have them. You can make the mana to cast the spells that you want to cast that turn. And she gives you a way to do it on her. Mm -hmm. So, like, it, it seems good to me. It's definitely just a more fair prosper. So here's the is it uh, goad, goad guy. Plays so a flying haste 3-3. Three, three. Whenever one or more dragons you control attacks an opponent, go target cre uh, creature uh, that player controls. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your, whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, that creature had to attack this combat. You put a plus one counter on on the dragon and you draw a card. Mm -hmm. So I think that this can potentially be very annoying because yeah. we, you only need red to build a dragon deck. We know that for a fact. Like mm -hmm. all the most important pieces are in red. Yes, there are broken dragons in other colors, but, like, the best of the best core dragon engine is red. Like, colorless red. They just printed a bunch of new blue dragons like this one. Or, like, uh, you know, the ancient copper, ancient silver. Like, this thing. Like, uh, we have tons of dragons like Niv-Mizzet. And for you to build, like, a dragon deck that is just gaining value and is a good deck, and you still get to play the tribal cards. So, like, and now the Kindred Discovery is, like, a budget card now. You know, it's not, like, $40 or whatever it was getting to. Like, I think that this deck, to be an attacking deck and also get to goad things is so good. You also I like about how it's worked. It's not, like, goaded forever. So... You just you don't you could just target things that have like like you could play around it a lot better than I think the other other cards that goad everything. Because mm -hmm. at most like if it gets to a situation where like if it's just you and the other opponent, you goad their smallest creature you don't care about and then force mm -hmm. it to attack you and then you block it. Or you don't block it, just let it deal the damage and take the two or whatever and that way like you don't and then, then uh So what's deals... the bottom effect again? Whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, if that creature had to attack this combat, you put a plus one counter on him and draw a card. Yeah, so, th yeah, that's that's good. To me, that's good. Yeah, I like this card. I, like uh, I, think, I think it's pretty good. The question is, is it A tier? You're playing dragons oh. with a built-in way to sort of give evasion, and it draws... And puts a counter. I don't know. There's a lot of goading mechanics too. Like there's also, we had we also had vengeful ancestor was the other dragon thing. Yeah. That when it attacks uh, or enters, you go to creature. Whenever a goaded creature attacks, it deals one damage to. Oh its yeah, controller. vengeful ancestor. Yes. Yeah. That which, was, so that yeah that could build up time. We also get to run uh, Imrith, which is one of my favorite dragons that came out. That's the blue one that has Ward Four when you deal damage, draw a card. Yeah. So I I don't know, man. What do you think? It also has flying in haste, right? Wait a minute, I gotta read this thing real quick. <laughs> hey, you know what's really funny? Mm -hmm. Territorial Hellkite, a four mana six five. 
At the beginning of your combat on your turn, choose an opponent at random, and it, if it didn't attack during your last, uh, that it didn't attack during your last combat, Hellguy attacks that player this combat if able. So because it's your own creature and it has to attack, it triggers the bomb effect because it says whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, if that creature had to attack, you still get the bonus from your own creature. So you could even play around not goaded things, but like there's like Chaos Dragon is a four mana. A three mana four four flying haste. It attacks each combat if able. 